I want to introduce the concept of limiting reactant to you today. And we've, in the last couple of um, chapters, we've been looking at um, bouncing equations. We've been looking at um, how to do some basic stoichiometry. Um, we learned um, just this past week, we learned how to convert from moles of A to moles of B. We also yesterday learned how to convert from grams of A to moles of B, moles of A to grams of B, and then also grams of A to grams of B. So we've learned all the foundational type calculations. We've laid the groundwork. And today I want to introduce to you a concept that um, we need to understand as far as if you were like a chemical engineer and you were trying to produce a product, let's say to sell, obviously to make money, um, but chemical engineers, chemists need to have an understanding of which reactant in the reaction is in control. There is always a reactant that, in, that is in control and is referred to as the limiting reactant. We will abbreviate that LR. Any other reactant that's not the limiting reactant, they're considered to be an excess. So we call those the excess reactants. I will abbreviate that XS, but you can also abbreviate that ER if you would rather. So let's define these. The limiting reactant is the reactant that limits the amount of product you can form. In other words, it controls how much product will form in the chemical reaction. When the limiting reactant runs out, no more product can be produced. Any other reactants are going to be left over, typically. We call those the excess reactants. These are the reactants or the reactant that there is too much of or there's excess of it, and there will be some left over. Now, there could be a time where both the limiting and the excess reactant run out at exactly the same time. And that's um, when we have what we call a stoichiometric mixture. But in the problems that we do, there will be a clear limiting reactant. Now before we look at some chemistry examples, some, some calculations dealing with some quantities in chemistry, let's just talk about the um, concept of limiting reactant using the idea of a recipe, because that's what a chemical reaction is. It's much like a recipe. So if we consider the reaction for making peanut butter banana sandwiches. So here's what the recipe would call for. To make one sandwich, we would need two tablespoons of peanut butter, four slices of raisin bread, and one banana. Those are the ingredients needed to make one sandwich. This would be sort of like a synthesis reaction, so we can write that so that it looks more like a chemical reaction. And this is sort of what it would look like. Two tablespoons of peanut butter plus four slices of raisin bread plus one banana. These are our reactants. There's three reactants here. And then they yield one sandwich. So the product is our sandwich. So these coefficients are like the coefficients in our balanced equation. And that's what makes this kind of like a recipe. It gives us the ratio. So let's look in our cupboard, if you will, and see what we actually have in our cupboard of these ingredients. This is the ingredients we have on hand. 70 tablespoons peanut butter, 200 slices of raisin bread, and 40 bananas. Now that's a lot of bananas. All right, so here's the question. How many sandwiches can we actually make with our ingredients that we have on hand? And then which is the limiting reactant and which reactants are in excess? So here's how you would go about doing this calculation. I'm going to make it look kind of like the dimensional analysis problems we've been doing in class so that when we get to those actual calculations you can see the transfer. So we always start with our givens. These are our givens here. So we have 70 tablespoons of peanut butter. We have 200 slices of raisin bread. And we have 40 bananas. I'll put ban or bananas. Okay. So this is what we have in our cupboard. And what is it that we're trying to make? We're trying to see how many sandwiches we can make. That's what the question wants to know. So we're going to convert all of these to sandwiches. I'll put SW for sandwiches for short. 
So this is going to be, I'm going to carry this out much like if it were a one-step mole-to-mole calculation. We'll, we'll say that it's a mole-to-mole -mole calculation. So we need tablespoons of peanut butter on bottom, and we're trying to convert to sandwiches, so sandwiches on top. So let's look. This is like our mole bridge. So we need, for one sandwich, we'll put a one beside a sandwich. Look at our tablespoons of peanut butter. We need two of them. So two. Two tablespoons of peanut butter. So if you do this calculation, you see that we can make 35 sandwiches, and our peanut butter will then run out. All right, let's do our raisin bread. RB on bottom for raisin bread, and we're trying to make sandwiches. So one sandwich, according to this, takes four slices of raisin bread. So the raisin bread cancels here, so 200 divided by four. That means I can make 50 sandwiches with all of the raisin bread that I have. Next, let's look at our bananas. So bananas on bottom, sandwiches on top again. According to this, one banana is needed for one sandwich. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So that means I can make 40 sandwiches with my bananas. All right, so the question says, which is our limiting reactant? Well, hopefully you can tell from what we have here that the thing that's going to run out first is going to be the peanut butter because I can only make 35 sandwiches. And once I've made 35 sandwiches, my peanut butter is no longer. I don't have any more. So that means that the peanut butter limits us. It determines how many sandwiches I can actually make. So what you would say then is that the limiting reactant is the peanut butter. And if I were to ask you who the excess reactants were, there are two of them here, the raisin bread and the banana. So RB for raisin bread, and I'll put BAN for bananas. Okay. All right, so that's kind of the concept. So let's talk through what we actually just did. So to determine your limiting reactant, the first thing we're going to need to do, and if you get stuck on your homework problems and you need to look back, this is where I would go to. This gives you the step-by-step -step breakdown. Convert each reactant to moles. We're going to go to moles of the same product. Now, in the event that you have more than one product, we're going to always go to the first product that was written down. That way, everybody's answers are the same. So go to moles of the first product. Once you've converted to moles of the first product, the reactant that produces the least amount, think back to what we just did, the one that made 35 sandwiches, that was the least amount, the least number of moles, that one is your limiting reactant. It controls how much possible product you can make. That's the maximum amount possible to form. All other reactants are in excess and therefore they're called the excess reactants. So let's take a look at this example here. Um, this tells us we have a chemical equation. You want to balance it. So we're going to balance it with a 1, 4, 1, 2. That'll balance this reaction. And it says you have 2 grams of HF and 4.5 grams of SiO2. You want to know which is the limiting reactant. So start with your givens. 2.0 grams of HF. And this reaction has actually two products. So we're going to always go to the first product that's mentioned. So here we're going to go to moles of SiF4. And we're going to start with a 4.5 moles, I'm sorry, grams of SiO2. And we're going to convert that to moles of SiF4. We always go to moles of the first product that's written if there's more than one product. Now, gram to mole is a two-step conversion. This is a point where you decide how many steps it is. Pause the video here and then start on the next video and pick up with the next video with checking your answer and then we'll look at a couple more examples. This will be the end for this video.